Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn about the research process from research methodology. So here the term research. So research means again and again searching for something until we find it out. So here research is a search for the knowledge. So we are searching for the knowledge. Right. So for the given problem statement, we are finding out the solution. So directly we are not finding out the solution. So in some, so we have to follow some set of guidelines. We have to follow some set of procedures to reach the solution. Right. So we cannot apply our own uh, we, we cannot take our own decisions to find out the solution. So there are already uh, prescribed some amount, some steps for, for the for finding the solution. So it helps us in taking the appropriate decisions. So here the research process steps. So research steps are there, right? So they, they will guide us to take appropriate decisions at each and every step. Research involves asking a question and then trying to find an answer to it. So it, it, it involves asking a question and trying to find the answer. So in order to find the solution, so we have to uh, pose many number of questions on the given subject. So research is essentially a systematic, scientific and structured inquiry seeking facts through objective methods. So it is a systematic. Systematic means it is a step by step process and it is scientific terms. So we cannot find out the solution for a problem in our um, through our own assumptions right so there are some scientific uh, methods to find out the solution and structured inquiry seeking facts through objective methods so we have to inquire about the particular problem we have to discuss with the with our uh, with our colleagues or with our friends so regarding the problem and we have to question about that particular problem so in order to find the uh, solutions we have to do structured inquiry. Therefore, a researcher must have a clearly defined step-by-step -step process. So there are uh, 10 steps for the research process, that is the problem formulation, literature survey, development of hypothesis, research design, choice of sample design, data collection, analysis and interpretation of data, hypothesis testing, interpretation of results and report writing. So these are the different steps or different phases to reach the solution for the taken problem statement. So the first one is the problem formulation. So pro formulation of the problem is the first and foremost step in a research process. So yeah, it is the first step. So if you can, if you take the problem, then only we can work on that uh, particular problem to reach the solution. If there is no problem, then there is no solution, right? How can we find out the solution without the problem? So the first important thing is formulating the problem. It will determine the focus of your research. So how you are formulating the problem, it will that will determine the focus of your research. It is not always easy to identify and define a problem in an ever-changing business environment. It is not easy to identify and define a problem. Right? So it is somewhat difficult only to identify and define a problem in a changing business environment. That means, so the technology will be uh, changing constantly right so it will be changing it will be very dynamic so in that type of scenario so to identify and define your problem is a somewhat difficult task and your research question should be specific clear and answerable the problem that you are formulating must be clear specific and answerable for example uh, i am a computer a scholar computer science scholar so i am considering the example of the computer science so I am taking the my form my problem as the security vulnerabilities associated with the IoT. So this is the problem I am formulating. Okay. So in so in the computer science there are number of uh, domains. So in that domain I am considering the IoT. In IoT I am considering the, about the security vulnerabilities. How the security um, how the security vulnerabilities will affect the IoT devices. So that is my research topic for suppose. So in this case. The research topic is focused on addressing the security vulnerabilities associated with IoT devices, which have become increasingly prevalent in modern technology ecosystems. The next one is literature survey. It helps in understanding of the problem and hypothesis that others have studied. So first of all, we have selected the problem here. 
so we have to know completely about that the problem statement so here i have taken the uh, security vulnerabilities on the iot devices so now i have to uh, I, i must have a complete idea on the security vulnerabilities and about the complete idea on the iot devices right so then only i can um, make some uh, i mean i can i can assume some solutions for the uh, taken problem so it helps in understanding of the problems and the hypotheses that others have studied so here the literature survey means so we are surveying the literature that that is already published so we have to understand the problems and hypotheses that is that others have studied so it clarifies the concepts theories major variables involved operational definitions and research methods used in the past so we are, suppose i am reading some journals regarding the iot devices and security so it will so after reading all that um, content regarding the iot uh, iot journals iot books and uh, regarding some information on the iot in websites then it will give some clarification for me on that concept theories and the variables involved in the uh, particular domain so this involves gathering information from existing sources such as books articles and websites so here the literature survey means so we are studying the current scenario of the particular technology so how can i study the current uh, current technology of of the iot devices so through the books articles and websites so the literature review will help you to understand the current state of knowledge on your research topic and identify any gaps in the research so here I, so here the literature review will help you to understand the current state of the particular problem right so we are studying all existing sources so that's why it will give you a current state of the knowledge on the selected research topic next one is the development of a hypothesis a hypothesis is a tentative assumption in a research problem which has to be tested empirically with the help of observed data so it is a tentative assumption that means so it is not the permanent permanent uh, result of the considered project right so it is a tentative assumption so the hypothesis may be accepted or rejected okay so we have to test the hypothesis with the help of the observed data so when formulating a hypothesis a researcher does not know whether it will be rejected or accepted so when we are formulating a hypothesis the researcher won't know that it may get accepted or rejected so this involves choosing the methods that you will use to gather and analyze your data so we have to analyze the and gather so it will it involves choosing the methods that you will use to gather and analyze the data research methodology should be appropriate for your research question and the available resources so this hypothesis is also called as a research methodology the main content of the problem that we are formulated okay and the hypothesis completely depends on the data that you have gathered from the articles or the books a good hypothesis states a research problem in concise and precise terms so that the researcher is focused on the problem at hand so if if you are having a good hypothesis then Uh, the research problem will state that it is very concise and precise okay so suppose i am conducting the uh, so i have formulated the hypothesis here so based on the literature review formulate specific research questions that you aim to answer or hypothesis that you want to test for example the research questions um, might be like uh, uh, i am considering the the topic security vulnerabilities on iot right so for on that topic i will pose some research questions like what are the most common security vulnerabilities in iot devices and how can we design a more secure communication communication protocol for iot devices so in this way i can pose some research questions or i can create some uh, research hypothesis for the assumed topic so next one is the research design so research design is a well defined plan of action so it is a planned sequence of the entire research process so it is a blueprint of the research activity so in the first step we have formulated the research pro uh, the research problem and second step we have known completely about the problem statement and in the third step we have uh, framed some hypothesis that means we have framed some question research questions on the uh, considered the topic 
right so now we are frame we are uh, framing the plan of action so we have to implement that uh, particular hypothesis so how it will be possible so for that so we have to plan the actions that we have to apply for the undertaken hypothesis so it is a blueprint of research activity okay so it is a like a blueprint so we are planning how should we perform the research activity a research design may change during the operation of a project so the the research design may change during the project so it won't be stable so it may change or may not change a good research design must use minimum sources like time money and manpower a research design must be able to translate the general scientific model into a practical research operation so the hypothesis that we have selected so it must be so we have to convert that just general scientific model that into practical research operation so for example uh, you plan to simulate various attack scenarios on iot devices in a controlled environment to understand their vulnerabilities better so you also intend to design and implement a new communication protocol for iot devices and compare its security with existing protocols so here we have to develop a research plan outlining the experiments uh, outlining the experiments that already happened so ensure that your experiments are well designed and practical so on the already uh, done experiments we have to uh we have to pursue some uh, results from the already so the next one is the choice of sample design so here we are choosing a sample for the research purpose so instead of uh, uh, instead of testing the entire population so we are select, we are selecting a particular sample from the population to perform the test for suppose uh, i want to conduct a research on a town uh, based on the average height of the people living in the particular town okay so here in the town uh, 1 lakh people are living so i cannot uh, uh, do the test on all the persons right? so i cannot check all uh, each and every person's height so instead of that i am taking a sample of 1000 people from the town okay so instead of select instead of measuring the height of each and every person in the town i am i am selecting 1000 persons from the 1 lakh population so i am taking a sample of 1000 persons from the 1 lakh population and i am considering the average height of the of all the persons okay so in any investigation the group of all items objects or individuals under the study is called population or universe so here i am considering the people living in a town so here 1 lakh people are living in a town so that is the population or universe and uh, i am taking a sample here okay so instead of enumerating entire population some items of the population called a sample is observed so i am considering only a sample of 1000 people and i am checking the average height of the 1000 people so this choosing the sample design is similar to so if the so if you want to check whether the rice is boiled or not so we will take a small amount of rice and check whether the rice is boiled or not right instead of checking each, uh, instead of checking the uh, rice in bowl so we are taking a small portion of rice from the bowl and checking it whether it is boiled or not so similarly here so we are taking a sample of the population and we are checking uh, whether it is valid or not for example on examining the sample of particular product we arrive at a decision of purchasing or rejecting that product so if you want to uh, purchase uh, a product so instead of buying that product so i am taking a sample of the product okay so i am taking the sample of that product and i am checking it okay. so if it, it works well then i will purchase the main product or else i will reject the product so depending on the requirement of a situation one can choose one of the following sample designs that is a uh, purposive or judgment sampling simple random sampling stratified random sampling systematic sampling cluster sampling area sampling multi stage sampling and multi phase sampling so these are the different types of samples so these are uh, pro- there are two types of sampling techniques actually random sampling and non random sampling so this we will discuss briefly in another video the next one is about the data collection so data collection means we are gathering some information that we need to answer for the undertaken research question so the data collection methods that you use will depend on your research question and the methodology so the data that you are collecting will automatically depend on the question that we have taken 
right so we'll collect the data based on the research uh, problem statement that we have undertaken so we need to collect the necessary data and perform experiments according to your research plan analyze the data using appropriate statistical or computational methods to draw meaningful conclusions so in the fourth step we have seen so we, uh, if you are doing research so first of all we have to plan the research and after that we have to uh, choose the sample and then we need to collect the data regarding that uh, research statement and then we have to analyze the data using some statistical methods such as the p test or x square test and the f test okay so there are two types of data that is the primary data and secondary data so what is in the primary data means if a researcher is doing some experiments then he will get some observations right he will the that observations and results right so the results and observations that the investigator gets for the first time is called as the primary data whereas the secondary data means the data which is already available in the records that means the existing uh, what is the uh, currently available data is called as the secondary data so the data may be uh, uh, available in newspapers or articles or journals or websites so anyway so which is already readily available is called as the secondary data and primary data means it is found by the researcher for the first time for example i want to know the security attacks on the iot devices then uh, i need to collect data through experiment simulation or data gathering techniques so analyze the collected data using the statistical or computational methods uh, suppose uh, i conduct experiment by trying different attack techniques on iot devices and record the outcome so i will gather the data on network traffic and security incidents to evaluate the new communication protocol so next one is the analysis and interpretation of data so in the previous step we have collected the data through primary and secondary sources right so after collecting data we have large amount of data so we have to classify or we have to cluster that data so that we can derive the conclusions easily right so the data at the beginning or in the raw form so for the purpose of applying further statistical techniques one has to put the raw data in a useful form by classification tabulation and categorization of the data so here we, we have a large amount of data available so we need to uh, which is numerical in format so we have to uh, convert that raw form of data into uh, we have to convert that raw form of data into some easily understandable format so how can we convert that into easily understandable format means using some statistical techniques so we are using the classification tabulation and the categorization of the data so we will classify the data right we will classify the data cluster the data and we will draw some graphs or regarding that data or we can create some pie chart on the data right we can create some tables on the collected data okay so after creating the uh, this type of tables and graphs we can easily draw the conclusions from the uh, collected data if one has to feed the data in a computer the data should bear the same form as required by the software used so this kind of processing data involves one or more activities such as coding labeling editing tabulation and classification so in order to convert the raw form of data into um, in the uh, understandable format so we need to uh, we need to process the data so that means some of the activities like coding labeling editing tabulation and classification so next one is the hypothesis testing so here the researcher uh, observes some facts that uh, he has collected whether or not an assumption is valid so the researcher decides on the basis of the observed facts that he has collected whether or not an assumption is valid a hypothesis is tested by making use of a predefined decision rules established in the statistical methods so based on the data uh, based on the fact observed facts that the researcher has collected so he will draw some assumptions here okay so he will check whether that assumption is valid or not using the hypothesis testing so from the starting of the research so whatever the observations he has observed he will draw all the observations uh, into a, uh, he will draw all the observation uh, observed facts and he will draw some assumptions here um, based on the uh, based on the observed facts so to test that the particular assumption is valid or not so we use the hypothesis testing so how the hypothesis testing is done means so it is done based on the predefined set of rules established in the statistical methods 
we are having two types of hypothesis testing that is a uh, uh, that is a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis null hypothesis means the two variables uh, there, there is no difference between the two variables then it is a null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis means there is some difference between the two variables then it is called as a alternate hypothesis so if you want the assumption to be valid then it must satisfy the null hypothesis that means the null hypothesis should be rejected and the alternate hypothesis should be accepted okay so if this if the uh, taken assumption is in this format only then that particular assumption is valid otherwise it is invalid okay so the null hypothesis must be rejected and the alternate hypothesis must be accepted then only the uh, assumption is valid so some of the popular statistical test or z test i square test p test and f test so these are some of the statistical test to do the hypothesis testing in a situation where no hypothesis is formulated in a study the observations are made on the data directly and conclusions are drawn to formulate new generalizations and assumptions for future purposes so next one is the interpretations of results so interpretation of results means so in the hypothesis testing we have uh, so based on observed facts we have drawn some assumptions so we know that the assumption is accepted or rejected if the assumption is accepted so based on the number of assumptions we have to draw some conclusion here right so that conclusion is the result okay so this is the interpretation of results so we are going to interpret the results based on the uh, valid uh, valid or accepted assumptions so we have to draw the final conclusion that is called as the interpretation of the results so these conclusions are most vital outcomes of the study and have to be dealt with very carefully so these conclusions must be drawn very carefully from the assumptions on the basis of findings of the research work done we draw inferences about the phenomenon under study so based on the research work done in different phases so we draw the inference about the phenomenon under the study so this is a useful activity as without any outcome a research study is fruitless the results obtained from the analysis of data are to be interpreted skillfully so the results which are uh, obtained from the analysis of uh, all the data that is previously observed in the previous steps must be interpreted skillfully and a, if the interpretation is correct then it will give you a fruitful results and if the same interpretation is wrong it may lead to wrong decisions okay so here the interpretation plays the key role so what is interpretation means we are drawing the conclusion based on the valid or accepted assumptions it may also help in developing new theories and can suggest new research problems to be explored in the future so if the interpretation is drawn uh, correctly then uh, it not only yield results but also it will uh, give a scope for the new theories and it will uh, give a chance to new research problems that to be explore explored in the future so last one is the report writing so here we have successfully drawn the final conclusion for the research problem then we have to publish the all the results the observations whatever the data we have collected and uh, the methodology that we have followed to get the final result so all these things must be uh, noted in a report right so reporting the facts and findings of the research study so it a report is a summary of the whole research process right so here in the research process we are having 10 steps right so the report writing in the report writing we are going to describe all these steps so how we have taken the problem whatever the literature, literature survey we have done and how the research design is planned and how the collected uh, what how the data is collected and which kind of data is collected okay how we are performing the hypothesis testing and how we are analyzing and interpreting the results so all these things will be uh, noted in a report okay so the layout of a report must be attractive the words used in the text must be easily comprehensible to a reader so the layout must be attractive for the report and the text that we are using in the report must be easily understandable by every individual okay so it must be very easy such that even a non technical person can understand it easily okay so this report writing may be a thesis or a conference paper or a journal paper okay so it can be anything right so in this way through the report writing we are publishing the uh, how we have done the research work to the uh, to the real world so this is about the 10 phases of the research process 
and thanks for watching my video